Hello, welcome back to Sword and Musket. We're back in the bunker and um, we've got the exciting part of the job to do. I'm like a kid at Christmas or a pig in you know what. Uh, we are surrounded by boxes freshly arrived from America. Now this is generally how I do things in my business. I find a lot of good stock in America and I find that the auction houses are honest and straightforward with their uh, descriptions. I don't think in the 15 years that I've been importing have I ever received a rifle that's been incorrectly described. I think once they missed a welded up firing pin hole uh, but it was fixable and it was a genuine mistake so I prefer to buy from America I buy from the main auction houses and then I go through the process of uh, building a shipment now it's taken a long time recently because the market is so strong in America our dollar rate with the pound has dropped seriously and I get kicked out of the uh, park when it comes to the bidding but it's it's taken about 18 months to build this shipment so we've finally got it in we've finally got it cleared through customs and flown over here um i've got a very helpful exporter out in colorado and he puts the shipments together does the export work and bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt it ends up with 25 boxes packed with beautiful chlor uh, curious and collectible firearms usable weapons antiques and this is the first stage of of unpacking them okay so with any uh obviously with any warehousing type procedure we've got to match them to the list of what we have ordered and make sure the seal numbers add up and then get them into the racks before we start the process well I saw the musket process at least of stripping every single gun down proofing them for the UK and preparing them for sale so I'm told by my very internet savvy son that People like watching videos of stuff being unpacked. So this is my version of stuff being unpacked. Personally, it uh, sounds a bit like watching paint dry to me, but there we go. Um, don't, obviously, I want to be careful. I want to preserve the packaging as much as possible. So we can reuse it when I send it out to customers. So I have no idea because I'm too lazy to match boxes to numbers what's in each box. But we'll start here. Looks like a couple of rifles. Here we go. What do we have? Who knows? And some of these have been wrapped for quite a long time since purchase at the auction house and then sending to the shipper. So rust does creep in, even though the best of intentions have been followed at all stages. I must say the Americans do act rather well um, this feels very slim this feels almost like a Winchester so I don't remember ordering a Winchester or buying a Winchester so it must mean that the bolts are out well, it's, uh, it's Christmas oh mummy daddy what did you buy me Keep going. Still feels flat. 
Ah, it's one of the martinis. So, I know there's a martini Henry Mark II on the list. It's been such a long time since I actually ordered. Oh, and this is one of the ones which has been converted to target rifle in 2.2. That's nice. It's got a... Right, so let's have a close look. Can you see this? Right. There's a wealth of information there which will warrant further investigation. There's a date. If I put my goggles on, I might be able to see what it says. It's 1889. There's a nice round war department cartouche for birmingham a beautiful screwed on brass black with a guy's name on it and a sold out of service mark it's been extended to be longer in the stock have a look up here it says enfield 1874 mark two two star on top, we've got the words uh, 2 2 ammunition, and it's a W Greenham conversion. So that's the way they come to me. Now, just <laughs> briefly, let's do the obvious and check that nothing's been left in the breach. I can just about see daylight through there. But this is how they generally come in. They're honest, rusty, still a bit of quite a bit of bluing down there, nicely blued uh, loading channel. Looks like it had a nice aperture target sight on the back, so it might be worth looking into that. See if we can get another one. It's been very well extended. They're filled in with timber, no filler. Yep, that's a nice gun. So we have to check the serial number. Um, it's carrying old proofs. So the serial number is 7557. So that will have to go for reproof again. 7557. In the rack she goes. Paper feels a bit damp. I think we might just burn that. No use wrapping things up in damp paper. Right, let's have another look. So I guess, I'm guessing this is the other martini target rifle. If it wants to come out. Very well packed in there. Wondering it might be shorter or smaller stuff. Hiding away somewhere. Obviously, you have to be thorough and not lose anything. Let's see. Always be careful with the knife, not to cut towards the woodwork. That would be it's a tragedy. It's another one, as suspected. Two, two, target tunnel site on the front. Turn it around the other way because we don't want another rust incident on our hands. Okay. Yeah, this is the other conversion. Well, it's got a nice sight on it. 
Check for loaded. The weapon is clear. Ammunition 2-2. Two, two. Guaranteed British. Thank goodness for that. Converted by CG Bonehill. So it's a Bonehill conversion. Extended once again at the stock. Enfield 1872. Yeah, pretty gum. Pretty gum. Nice. Simple aperture target flight. And a decock close. Check serial number against list. End of. Okay, so this box feels quite heavy. I think we've got a. This is like lucky dip down the fair. Ah, here we are. What's this? Oh. Right, let's have a look. Let's see. It's obviously pistol size. Like brain surgery. Don't want to cut the wrong bit. I think I know what this is. Holster shaped. Ho oh, ho. Yes. Aficionados will know what that strange shape contains. Bad. Roth style. Budapest. Budapest. Weapon is clear. Yeah, that is nice. Lots of bluing on that. If I can decock it. I've never handled one before. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's not fully decocked. That is nice. Solid. Okay, well that's arrived nicely. Safely. Some tools in the pouch. Just like Christmas. So, never turn your back to the camera. Here we are, nice big box. A lot of brown paper. Actually, that's still dry, so we're going to keep that. And the amount of money that can be saved in reusing packaging is unbelievable for a small firm. Right, let's just grab the first one. Lucky Dip It's an interesting looking box. Here we go, what have we got? Feels like a hammer gun, to, well, feels like it's got a hammer on the back end. Once again, quite carefully cutting outwards at the sellotape. Oh, it's a, I think it's a Mauser. 71 or 7184. Play a guessing game at this point. Cutting outwards again. Scalpel nurse. We don't want to nick any arteries. friend of mine once cut himself with a scalpel 
her, and the amount of blood was scary. Here we go, here we go. The bolt must have been packaged separately. I do like these Mausers. They're absolute crackers. Corkers, you could say. Yeah, this is the Model 71 pre-alteration. What a beautiful gun. 1877, it's got on it. Stamped. Made at... Haven't got my glasses on. This is bad. This is getting worse. It's an Amberg. That's the earlier sight. Oh, it's a beauty. Oh, it's a beauty. Right, let's find the bolt. Oh, uh, 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 bolt. It says bolt. Singular, not plural. If this is the Amaskeg Auction Company, they always pack extremely well, as do Rock Island. The big... There we go. There we go. Yep. All that paper just for this bolt. Nice little box. <laughs> that is without a doubt 71 bolt which will require a screwdriver to put it in properly 501 5001 5001 10.95 mm what a corker yeah Okay, so that's how they come to me. That is a lovely, lovely gun. Still, still has to be cleaned and re-oiled, but it will be done.
Right, we've done it. We've unpacked them all. We've cleared the floor. So it basically goes from here all the way up to here. Fresh imports, many different nations, but we have got to strip them, clean them, get them checked and proofed, and then they will be ready to sell. But at the moment, we've just clicked them, checked them off the list. One of the biggest things is saving all the packaging so we can use it again. So what have we got? We've got a couple of Nagants, Russian Nagants. We have got some 1912, 08 Mausers, Chilean, Argentinian. We got a K30, uh, we got a K Carbine, Schmidt Rubin. We have some M39 Nagants. There's another Mauser 7184 there. Nice little mass 45 in the corner, K98. About six Remington and Smith Corona A3s in a Springfield. An early Springfield trapdoor Mossberg trainer. Then we go on to the Brits. We got some carbines, jungle carbines, number one Mark threes, various descriptions and conditions. P14, a couple of Martini Henry targets. And all of these are Arisakas. Well, that's a Snyder, that should be up there. And a bunch of Swedes. Oh, we've also got some off ticket Mausers. We've got a lovely Wendell carbine. And that's about it. So come back to us, and I'll be going through cleaning, stripping and generally restoring all of these rifles on and off in the future. Watch out for more videos. Thanks for joining us at My Sword and Musket. Remember, click like and subscribe for more tales of daring do from the world of guns.